Hello, this is Mrs. Peffer, and this week I'm going to read a story called The Fantastic Jungles of Henri Rousseau, written by Michelle Markle and illustrated by Amanda Hall, and published by Erdman's Books for Young Readers. Henri Rousseau wants to be an artist. Not a single person has ever told him he is talented. He's a toll collector. He's 40 years old. But he buys some canvas, paint, and brushes, and starts painting anyway. Why? Because he loves nature. Because when he strolls through the parks of Paris, it's like the flowers open their hearts, the trees spread their arms, and the sun is a blushing ruby, all for him. Henri can't afford art lessons, so he has to be his own teacher. He goes to the Louvre and examines the satiny paintings of his favorite artists. To learn about anatomy, he studies photographs and illustrations from postcards, magazines, and catalogs. One day, Henri reads about a big art exhibition. He puts his canvases in a handcart and wheels them to the building where the show will be held. He's 41 years old and this is the very first time he'll display his work. He can hardly wait to hear what the experts will say. Mean things. That's what most of them write. But Henri snips out the articles anyway and pastes them in a scrapbook. Henri walks around the city, gathering ideas for his pictures. He goes to the World's Fair, where a man named Eiffel has built a lattice tower of metal rising several hundred feet into the air. What thrills Henri most are the fair's exhibits of villages from distant lands. They remind him of adventure stories he loved when he was a boy. Days later, Henri can still picture the plants and animals from faraway places. He holds his paintbrush to the canvas. A tiger crawls out, lightning strikes, and wind whips the jungle grass. Sometimes Henri is so startled by what he paints that he has to open the window to let in some air. Every year, Henri goes back to the art exhibition to show new paintings. He fusses over the canvases and retouches them until the last minute. And every year, the art experts make fun of him. They say it looks like he closed his eyes and painted with his feet. Henri keeps painting and learning. In the fall, he collects leaves from the cemetery to sketch. He spends hours drawing at the Jardin des Plantes, where, oh happiness, a gardener sneaks him into the hothouses. Towering palms spread their giant fans, tropical plants fruit and flower into garlands, rockets and rosettes of color. When Henri walks through the glass doorway, it's as though he enters into a dream. It's like he is someone else completely. One day, Henri paints a still desert night, bathed in moon glow. He sees a gypsy sleeping. A lion creeps up, but does not harm him. Once again, he takes his work to the art show. This time, perhaps, he'll please the experts. His pulse races. The experts say he paints like a child. If you want to have a good laugh, one of them writes, go see the paintings by Henri Rousseau. By now, Henri is used to the nasty critics. He knows his shapes are simpler and flatter than everyone else's, but he thinks that makes them lovely. He spends all he earns on art supplies and pays for his bread and coal with landscapes and portraits. In the afternoon, he takes off his frayed smock and gives music lessons. His home is a shabby little studio where one pot of stew must last the whole week, but every morning he wakes up and smiles at his pictures. Henri turned 61 years old. Because of his poverty, he'll never travel to a real jungle. It doesn't matter. He sees one before him, clear as day. For weeks, he fills in his jungle, tenderly shaping every fern, every frond, every blade and leaf. As always, when Henri finishes the painting, he takes it to the exhibition. Many experts mock him. One says only cavemen would be impressed by his art. But this time, several artists disagree. The artists are much younger than Rousseau and are already well known. They befriend him. And whenever Henri has money to spare and stages a concert in his little studio, all the artists come. 
along with the grocer, locksmith, and other folks from the neighborhood. They listen to Henri's students and friends play their musical instruments. Henri gives the shiniest, reddest apples to the children. One night, a well-known artist named Picasso throws a banquet for Henri. The old man sits upon a makeshift throne. Poets recite poems for him. Guests sing songs and make speeches. Henri plays his little violin, and people dance to the music. His heart floats like a hot air balloon above the fields. Toward the end of his life, Henri makes a remarkable painting called The Dream, his biggest ever. As he does every year, he displays it at the exhibition and anxiously awaits the reviews. A famous poet writes, I don't think anyone will laugh this year. Few people do. A hundred years later, the flowers still blossom, the monkeys still frolic, and the snakes keep slithering through Henri's hot jungles. His paintings now hang in museums all over the world. And do you think experts call them foolish, clumsy, or monstrous? Mais non, they call them works of art by an old man, by a one-time toll collector, by one of the most gifted, self-taught artists in history, Henri Rousseau. Hello. We just read The Fantastic Jungles of Henri Rousseau, and in the illustrations, I really liked um, all of the jungle scenes and using his imagination. So I thought we would draw a jungle animal together and I chose a toucan. So um, you can follow along with me. And what you're gonna need today is one piece of paper. And I'm gonna draw my toucan vertically, but if you wanna turn it horizontally, you can draw it that way as well. If you want to start in pencil, you can, so that if you want to erase anything along the way. Um, and of course, anytime you want to pause the video um, to kind of catch up to where I am, please feel free to do that. You could also draw with a sh black Sharpie marker or a black Crayola marker. Um, but just know that if you start with a marker um, and you make a mistake, you're going to have to make it part of your art. Um, you can leave this just a drawing. I think it would look really nice that way. But if you want to add some color, um, this toucan that I just drew right here, I used marker. And I really like the bright colors of the marker, especially in the colorful bill of the toucan. But I found, especially since most of the body of the bird is black, that using a solid black color to fill it in didn't work as well. You would lose a lot of details. So I just used short um, kind of diagonal lines to show the feathers, but I did not color it in a solid color. Um, I did the same thing with the brown, and I even did some of the same with the leaves. Um, I did color the bill and around the eye a solid color. I think for this example, I'm gonna use colored pencils because you can get much more of a variety um, of color. Like pushing harder, you get a darker color. So I can really vary the blackness. Um, crayons would also work really well for that. So we're gonna draw this toucan. I'm gonna start with the eye of the bird. We're drawing it from the side, so it's like a profile. Um, and then we're gonna add the bill. So I'm putting mine kind of in the upper um, corner. And then um, we're gonna work on the head, kind of the front, um, curve of the bird. We're going to come around um, to the belly and then the wings. And then there's tail feathers here, his legs and feet here. Mine is sitting on a branch. Yours could be flying, yours could be on the ground. You can decide the background. Um, and then I'm going to start filling it in with jungly leaves. Okay. I'm going to start with a marker so that you can really see um, what I'm doing. And again, I'm gonna start with the eye. So my paper is vertical, and I'm gonna go in the upper right-hand corner, and I'm gonna start with a circle for the eye, and I'm gonna color it in just a little bit, but leave a little bit of white in there. And then I'm gonna start with a curve um, above the eye and to the right to show where the beak is gonna go. So it's just kind of part of a circle. And then I'm gonna draw the center of the beak. And mine is pretty close to the edge here. If you don't wanna have yours that close, you could bring it in a little bit. 
And I'm going to draw a curved line here for the bill on the top. And then I'm going to go from the bottom and bring it up to meet the part of the bill here. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is put in the curve of the head. I'm going to curve it down a little bit of the neck here. And then I'm going to go in and put the um, right side of the neck coming down. So I'm going to start at the end of the bill here. And I'm going to come down and I'm going to curve it around. Okay, just curving it around. It almost looks like a J shape, like the letter J. And then um, you can decide if you just want one wing or if you want two wings showing or part of one. So where this curve is coming down, I'm actually going to have the wing come in. So I'm going to bring it around like this. And I'm going to put in some curved lines and then more of just a top, almost rainbow line curve up here, okay? And I can finish off um, the body by bringing it right up to the wing. And he's, he's pretty big, he's a pretty big guy. If you wanna have part of another wing showing, you can just put a little curved line here, okay? And then the tail feathers are gonna come under this wing and they're just these long curved lines, maybe four or five of them, okay? And that shows the um, tail feathers. And then right down here, I'm going to make the legs. So I'm just going to do two little curved lines for the legs and then the feet. And I'm just going to put kind of the toes of the bird in. Maybe four of them right here. And then you can decide, um, is it on the ground? Is it on the branch of a tree? I'm going to have mine on a branch. So I'm going to put in this diagonal line here. So I'm going to start on the left hand side. <coughs> And I'm going to bring it up. I do not draw it through my bird, so I pick up my pen as I'm going through. And then I'm going to curve it up kind of in a Y shape here. A lot of trees branch out that way. So it looks like he's sitting kind of on an upper branch of a tree. And then I'm going to add some more details. So um, toucans have really colorful faces and bills. So I'm going to draw just some little designs, like I did a little curved line here on the upper part of the beak where it's touching the middle. And then the tips of the beak are different color. They're kind of a reddish color. And then I'm just going to put another little line here. As long as you vary the color here, I think that'll give it the uh, toucan kind of look. And then I'm going to draw, actually I won't draw the lines around um, here for the eye. But know that when I add color, I'm going to add a couple of rings of color going around. Um, there is also um, a line that comes around. So start it kind of up at the beak here. And around the eye and down to the belly, kind of like that. And this tends to be a yellowish color. And then around the eye, it's kind of bluish, greenish. And then you have the more colorful bill. Okay. And then over here, I'm going to start putting in some jungly leaves. So I can just put a curved line in for kind of the center part of the leaf and I'm going to make it thicker. And then I'm going to draw wavy lines on either side. So I get a big jungly leaf. And then if you want to put the veins of the leaf in, you can. You could also have another one here, but you can't see the whole thing because the bird is there. And then also on the tree, you might choose to draw some leaves. You could draw different kinds of leaves. So I'm drawing a central kind of stem and then a pair of leaves on each side. And I'm gonna do one down here as well. Kind of like that, okay? Mine is a really big body, but I, I'm okay with that. You could keep adding in, maybe I'll add in some other leaves up here. I kind of like that. So it really looks jungly. Maybe here as well, just coming off from the paper you know, the bottom from the edges, and that'll really make it look like it's deep in the jungle. Okay. Now, you could just leave it a drawing like this, but I like to add color, and I'm going to use my colored pencils. Okay. Most of these colors are going to go right here on the bill. Um, I'm going to use mostly yellow here um, for the neck of the bird, and then the body of the bird is going to be black. So I'm just going to use kind of a lighter touch with the black. Um, the branch could be a brownish color, um, and then the leaves, um, you could use different colors of green. And again, the harder you push, um, 
the darker your color and then the lighter the pressure, the lighter the color. So I'm gonna start with the bill and I'm gonna put um, red on the tip. Just like that. And then I'm gonna put orange. This is kind of a peachy orange right on this little curved part here. And then I'm gonna do a light green. And just kind of, sh I'm kind of putting it in the center of the bill and the edge. And also I'm gonna make this part green. And then I'm gonna add like a light blue. I am not leaving any white on the bill. Like that. And if you want a darker blue, you can use that, if whatever you have. And then around the eye, I'm gonna use some blue. So I'm making a ring around it. And then I'm gonna use the green. You could also paint this with watercolors. And then I'm gonna use yellow. And again, I'm trying to go in the same direction. I'm trying to stay inside the lines and shapes that I've drawn. And if you wanna layer in some colors, you can. So I'm putting in my yellow, and then maybe I add a little orangey color in there. Whatever you want. And then I'm gonna go for black for the body. So I'm gonna try just a light touch. I'm kind of going in at a diagonal. I think that looks pretty good. And I'm actually almost coloring in an oval, like a tight oval. And I'm keeping my arm really loose. And I'm resting my, um, the edge of my hand kind of on my paper so that I can just move it around. And I'm holding my paper down with my other hand. And when you overlap, it makes some darker colors. And then I'm gonna go in here for the wings. The tail feathers. And I could even do, go with uh, black for the feet. So the black part isn't as interesting as the colored part, but I think it looks more like a toucan. And then I'm gonna use some brown for um, the tree. And if I just have one brown, I can make some darker kind of lines so it looks like the texture of the branch. Sometimes they're you know more of a shape or a curved line. And then I can go back a little bit lighter and I get two different colors of brown on my tree branch. And then um, I'm gonna use a variety of greens for the leaves. And again, the darker I press, or the harder I press, the darker the color. And I can do a dark center here, maybe darker where the veins are. And then not press as hard when I'm filling it in. And then I might choose to do um, a, another leaf, a different color of green. This one's a lot lighter, limeier. And I might use that same kind of lime green down here. So it's okay to use this, even if you just have one green, you can just make them all green or maybe you wanna make it a yellowy green so you can overlap blending colors. Might be hard to see here, but I'm gonna put some yellow in here and then I'm gonna go in with my green. 
And then you can leave this negative space in the background white if you want to, or you could make it a blue color for the sky or whatever you want, okay? And I would just keep going until um, all the leaves um, are colored, and then you can look at it and say, do I need to add anything? Do I wanna make the wings look more feathery? Do I want some darker lines in there? Or am I happy the way that it looks, okay? And if you were inspired by the book, so this one's a very jungly scene here on the cover. There's lots of beautiful flowers, um, other birds, there's even a tiger. Um, you can try drawing other things from the jungle um, and use your imagination. Um, Russo used his imagination a lot. So thank you very much. See you next time.